Melissa, I'm scared to go live. Gosh, how many times have I heard that? And were you the one that I heard it from? Because if so, you're not the only one. I know so many coaches and healers that are scared to go live. And today we're going to talk about getting over your fear of doing it. So stick around. You're listening to Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast. Welcome to Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast. And now your host, Melissa Jakubovic. So I know that going live can be scary. Everyone who goes live, even the people who go live on a regular basis like myself, had to go live one time for the first time at some point. That's just the way it is. That's the way everything in life is. When you see people who do things and they're very successful, they once had their first time too. It's okay to be scared. It's natural to be scared. But Don't let that hold you back from doing something that you know you need to do to grow your online business. Because you're growing an online service-based personal branded business, we have to show up and serve and you have to be personal and you have to do it online. That's what that means. Online, business, personal branded, service-based. Going live covers all three of those things, so it truly is a must. Now, if you're scared of doing it, rip off the Band-Aid and just go do it. I challenge you to just go do it. But what I'm going to talk to you about in this podcast is how you can overcome the fear or at least alleviate some parts of that fear so that you are able to move yourself forward. The first thing that most people are afraid of is that they're going to mess up. What happens if I mess up? I'll tell you what happens if you mess up nothing. You messed up. Big deal. (laughs) It's okay. I mess up all the time. That's not important. In fact, it helps you. Because you're building a personal branded business, we want to see your face. We want to hear your voice. We want to see your facial expressions. We want to see if you move your hands when you speak because that's how we connect. We're human beings. If I just read text on your social media news feed all the time, I don't really get a good feel for who you are. But if I see you showing up live, I do get a better feel. Nothing compares to meeting you face to face but it does help that we see you on a video and I've been saying this way before the whole world went virtual with the pandemic so it really does help build a relationship when you can go live and when you mess up what does that do it shows us a really authentic side of you and you're very genuine I mess up all the time I have coughed in the middle of my lives. I have sneezed in the middle of my lives. My dog has barked in the middle of my lives. My my kids have walked into my office in the middle of my lives. I've had the people here outside who mow the lawn, mowing the lawn right outside the window of my live video. I have gone live outside on my porch while an airplane flew over or while people in the street were fighting. So what? The answer to what if I mess up is so what? This isn't about you. This is about them. So don't make it about you. Don't make it about what if I mess up? What if I don't look good? What if I don't say the right thing? What if no one shows up? What if, what if, what if, me, 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 me. You are in business to help other people. And because you're in business to help other people, I want you to think about going live as another way to serve them. That's why we have a service-based business. So You're going to provide value that helps other people. People screaming in the parking lot of your live video is not a reflection of you. And it doesn't matter because it's irrelevant. It is totally irrelevant to you helping the other person. So just show up and just put your best foot forward. And we're going to come back to this authentic thing in a minute. I know some people have a fear about technology and that's a valid fear. I mean, I still have a fear of technology and I use it all day long. Sometimes things don't work. I ran my very first Thanks for the Clients Challenge group using a streaming software that crashed on me in the middle of one of my most important lessons. And I had hundreds of people on the call and I was like, uh, what am I supposed to do? It's not working. And I just quickly turned on Zoom and hoped for the best. We can't control technology, but the good news is everyone's in the same boat. Nobody can control technology. And you don't have to have the most advanced video and lighting software. And you don't need to have the most advanced softwares and webcams and lighting in order to go live and be effective. In my old business, in my health and life coaching business, I went live once a week for many years from a crappy old iPhone. So 
it doesn't matter what device you're using. It does matter about your lighting. And I'm not saying that you need to have an expensive ring light. I just mean don't sit in front of a window so you look like a shadow and we can't see you. Just sit somewhere where it's lit well and don't have that window behind you unless it's closed. If you're going to have a window, put the window in front of you so that the sun shines through and we can see your face. If you're going to go live while you are on a walk, as a lot of coaches do, make sure you're not directly in the sun and then you just look like a bright light. So you want to be cognizant of the lighting situation but you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on professional lighting same with your webcam I actually go live from my laptop now and I've noticed that sometimes it's not really high quality sometimes it looks high quality and other platforms it doesn't so I was on a search to find a webcam that would make it look super professional I had to buy six different webcams and none of them looked the way I wanted it to none of them and I returned all of them So I'm still using my laptop and one day maybe I'll find a webcam that makes me happy. The point is go live. The message that you have inside of you is so important for your target market. You're there to help them get that message out. Don't keep it to yourself because then you're doing a disservice to them. And don't use the excuse, oh, I don't like my camera or I don't like my lighting. Just keep going live. One day I'll get a webcam. Until then, I'm still going to go live. So just show up. If technology fails, fine. You go live next time or you go live right ag- right after it fails and you're like, ha ha ha, technology failed. Now I'm back. So don't worry about it. Just be lighthearted about the whole thing like you're talking to a friend. Which brings me to my next point. Sometimes you're scared to be alone. What if nobody shows up? What if nobody engages with me? What if I am talking to myself? My answer there again is, So what? It doesn't matter. Talk to yourself. I'm recording this podcast talking to myself in my office. Maybe it's just me because I talk to myself all the time. I'm talking to myself when I'm driving. I'm talking to myself when I'm in the shower. I'm talking to myself when I'm organizing things and moving things. I like to talk to myself. Maybe that's just the way my brain works. But I'm talking to myself right now. At least that's what it feels like while I'm sitting here with my microphone. But by the time you guys listen to this, it's been an edited production of a podcast and you guys are absorbing this information and hopefully you find it helpful. So I'm talking to myself, not because of me, again, because of you. I'm here to help you, to make you move your business forward in a great way. And going live is one of those ways. So when you are sitting in front of your computer, if nobody shows up, it's okay. Still give off that great information because you know people can come back for the replay and they can see it later. So I highly recommend you go live and just speak about whatever you're going to speak about. Now, if you're really, really nervous about being alone, what you can do is ask a business buddy or even your mom or your neighbor to get on the live with you and just engage with you while you're there and support you to watch you so that you have some followers or some viewers rather, and then maybe to like it or comment on it. And you know, the more people that come and like and comment and engage with your video, the more Facebook will show your video in other people's news feeds. So having somebody on the live with you might be a way to relieve this stress again if you don't have somebody that's okay still show up still do it i'm sure that you've been told over and over and over again that creating content is an essential part of your marketing plan but if you're like most business owners you might be stuck in analysis paralysis trying to figure out what where and how to post Or maybe you've been creating content like crazy, but you just aren't seeing the results you've been promised. I promise you, you're not alone. That's why I created my Complete Content Strategy Toolkit, a comprehensive digital toolkit to efficiently and consistently create meaningful content that converts. My toolkit is packed with over $3,000 worth of tools, and the best part? I'm offering it all for the price of one dinner. Go check it out now at AbundantStrategy.com. Sometimes you're afraid of how you look. Maybe that's what the fear is. Oh my gosh, people are going to see the real me. If you feel that way, then doll yourself up a little bit. Put on some makeup if it makes you feel good. Sometimes I wear a chapstick that has a light color to it. Not always, sometimes. Sometimes I put on perfume before I go live. Why? It doesn't make any sense, but I just do it. It's like, oh, I'm getting ready to go to work. And for me, going live is going to work. So I might put on some perfume. Um, sometimes I don't. <laughs> sometimes I hop right out of the shower. If you guys are in my group, magneticmarketingmastermind.com, you know this. <laughs> you see me. I pop on 
at the time I go live, which right now is Wednesdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, and I might have just jumped out of the shower and my hair is still soaking wet and I look like a hot mess and that's fine. I have gone live in pajamas before. I have gone live and forgotten to brush my hair before. Let me tell you again, it's okay. Show up. Show up. That's what it's about. It's about showing up so that you can provide value and service to your people that need to hear it the most. It is not about you and how you look. Truly, it's not. That's why people have successful businesses who are all ages, all walks of life. They look all different ways. Sometimes they're sitting at their desk. Sometimes they're going for a walk. Sometimes they're driving. And I don't recommend that. My point is, it doesn't matter how you look. But if it makes you feel better to look a certain way, then go look a certain way and get yourself ready. I like to go live when I have something to say. And so I'm not going to go, oh my gosh, I can't go live because I can't find my clothes or my necklace or whatever. You can go live with or without a bra. Really, whatever you want to do. You can wear pajama pants, you can be barefoot, and you can look like a total hot mess. And when you go live, you can even call it out. And you can say, hey guys, I look like a total hot mess, but I have this important piece of information to share with you, so you definitely want to listen. So my point is, do whatever makes you feel good, but there is no right or wrong way to show up, as long as you're showing up. Okay, so another thing that I wanted to say about being authentic is that is truly what this whole thing is about. It's about showing us who you are, what you believe, how you sound, how you move, and it's okay not to be perfect. In fact, if you are perfect, I'd look at you and go, why is she so perfect? What's wrong with her? Instead, I want you to show up exactly how you are, your authentic, genuine self. We are not striving for perfection when it comes to a life. We really aren't. For me, I... I really, truly believe you need to be going live at least once a week and I'm not perfect. Sometimes I have a call back to back to back calls all day long with coaching clients and I need to squeeze in a live that day because I've scheduled it and so I show up when I say I'm going to and so if I schedule on my calendar, for example, that I'm going to go live on Thursday and Thursday happens to be a super busy day, well, then they're going to get the tired version of me. And that's okay. I'm allowed to be tired. There is no perfection. I might trip up on my words. I might make no sense. Also, totally okay. So just make sure that you're being authentic. Nobody even wants to see perfection, especially women. When women see perfection, they feel bad about themselves. So if you show up imperfect, you are now more relatable than anyone else could be. Okay, and maybe your fear, maybe your fear is about the actual, what am I talking about? What am I teaching on? What am I saying during this live? Maybe you don't feel comfortable being on stage in front of 100 people. Guess what? Going live is not being on stage in front of 100 people. You get to sit wherever you feel like putting your butt and you put a piece of technology in front of you, whether it's your phone or your laptop, and you get to talk to yourself. How awesome is that? Especially for you introverts. I see you. You are in a room by yourself talking to a device. Don't think about talking to hundreds of people. Plus, hundreds of people are probably not watching you, and that's okay. And if hundreds of people are watching you, yay, that's awesome. You're going to get a lot of engagement, and a lot of people are going to learn how amazing you are. But maybe you're nervous because you don't know what you're going to say while you're there. And that's why I highly suggest you have a plan or an agenda. And I always go live with a plan, a bullet-pointed list of what it is I want to cover always. That way you can go off on tangents if you want to. You can talk about other things if you want to. If you draw a blank and you forget what you're talking about, you can always go back to the list. For example, this podcast, believe it or not, has a list of like 10 things I want to cover. So as I'm talking about them, I'm like, yep, I got that one. Yep, I got that one. What did I leave off? Oh, I need to talk to you about knowing everything for example, and that is the next bullet point on my list. So I want you to prepare the content that you are going to talk about when you go live and don't feel like you need to have it memorized. Bring that thing with you. Why do we need to memorize things? I don't want to memorize anything. I was a theater major and I had was one of my majors. I have two. And I had to memorize scripts all the time and I had to go on stage and memorize my lines all the time. Okay, now I have two kids. Now I'm much older. My brain does not hold in information. I cannot retain information for long periods of time. I have to-do lists out the wazoo. I think of it, I write it down. Why? So that I don't have to remember it anymore. And the same thing goes for going live. I always have a list. 
don't rely on your brain because if you're feeling nervous anyway and you're relying on your brain, you might draw a blank. But if you have paper next to you or if you rather use technology and have a typed up list on your computer, you can do that too. Now there's nothing to worry about because it's right there already. So come to the call, come to the live with a list prepared for what you want to cover what what that content is that you're going to share. And honestly, most times I only have three bullet points and then I just talk and talk and talk. If that's not good enough for you, you can have 10 bullet points and then pick and choose what you want to talk about. Or you can have three bullet points and then expand out on them. But I wouldn't write like a whole lengthy story. You just want little dots, little bullet points so that it triggers you to remember what it is you want to talk about. The other thing is you don't need to know everything. See, I told you that was one of my bullet points. You don't need to know everything. So if you're nervous, if your fear is coming from people asking you questions you don't know the answers to, then just tell them. Say, well, I actually don't know that, but thanks for bringing that up. I'll go check it out. I'll come back maybe on another live or I'll come back in the comments and respond to you. But thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for asking that question. You don't need to know everything. Who in this world knows everything? I'm an online marketing strategist for over five years and there are things I don't know. And guess what? That's okay. That's like my quote for this podcast. Guess what? That's okay. And then the last thing I want to tell you about is just the format of going live because maybe your fear is I don't know the format. So let's break it down. You want to keep your live to about 10 to 15 minutes. And believe me, that goes really, really fast, especially if you already have your content planned out and you have bullet points. So keep it to about 10 to 15 minutes in most cases. What you do is you get on, you say hi, you tell people who you are, why we should listen to you, what you do. Then you tell us what you're going to talk about. Then you talk about what you're going to talk about. If you want, you can summarize what you just talked about and then you give a call to action. A call to action is what you want them to do. Do you want them to join your Facebook group? Do you want them to sign up for your webinar? Do you want them to have a good day and do nothing? You get to decide. Do you want them to comment below and tell you the answer to the questions that you have? So you come with a call to action at the end. Now, when people are on the live, if you do have people that show up, I want you to call out who those people are on the live. Be like, hey, Jen, thanks for hopping on. Hey, Marissa, so nice to see you. So just call those people out. If people ask questions during your live, you can answer them as you're going live or you can save them to the end and answer all the questions if there are any. And then you get off. It's a done deal. So I encourage you to go live especially if you are afraid of it, if this has been a fear that has been holding you back, it is time to break free. Go live and report back and let me know how it goes. All right, I hope this helps and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast at www.marketingtipswithmeliss.com. Hey coaches and healers, it's time to feel supported in your business. Head on over to our free community to get access to my best resources for free. I'm talking marketing tips, business strategy, feedback, and so much more. Join now at magneticmarketingmastermind.com. See you there.